Good morning and God bless you on this first Monday of the season of Advent. As we begin Advent, we're reminded that Advent is a time really of, of preparation, a time where we prepare our hearts and our lives to celebrate and receive again the wonder and gift of God's salvation in the coming of Jesus. And as I think about it this week, I'd like to take a break from our series that we've been doing of Can You Relate and really focus on our Advent preparation. And this week, I'd like to take a look at it in this way, that we start with preparing our hearts. And tomorrow, we'll look at preparing our minds. And then on Wednesday, we'll look at preparing our bodies. And I don't want to scare you about that. Uh, on Thursday, I want to talk about preparing our homes. And then on Friday, preparing our relationships. So that's kind of the roadmap for the daily devotions for this week. And so let's turn to our heart. And I want to start with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It's a verse that hopefully we all know, uh, but sometimes I think we kind of forget. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Wow, the powerful encouragement there and a reminder that the motives, the words that come out of our mouth, you know, Jesus says that it's out of the overflow of our heart, our mouth speaks. And we're reminded that so often, so many of the struggles that we have in our life and in our relationship come with what's in our heart. And it can be sin, it can be that pride and that selfishness, that covetousness where we want things that don't belong to us and we're just not happy. It can be the wounds and the pain and the scars that we have that have never healed in our hearts. And in every relationship, those things have a way of coming out and tainting or poisoning the way we hear, the way we perceive other people and the way we treat them as well. You know, Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs, he said, you know, above all else, guard your heart. Everything you do flows from it. So I invite you to think about where is your heart today? You know, yesterday in church, uh, we heard the words of Jesus as he was talking about the coming judgment and the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan of salvation. And he warned the people listening to him. He said, watch, pray, be on your guard or your hearts will be weighed down with the anxieties of this life. And you think about that, the weighing down because our hearts are so focused on the here and now and the stress and the worry and the fear. So let's take a moment and examine our hearts. Are you willing to pray to Jesus today and just say, Jesus, here it is. Here's what's on my heart. Here are the things that I've been holding back. Here are the things that I've been harboring. And Jesus, I'm asking you to set me free. I'm asking you to come in and cleanse my heart. You remember in the book of Psalms, David, after he had committed some horrible sins, he wrote a prayer of confession that we have and we repeat oftentimes even in our worship service. And for many of us, we repeat it in our own daily devotions. From Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord Jesus, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. You know, I think sometimes the problem is we don't necessarily want a pure heart. Here, that's maybe my confession of the day. You know, I like a little bit better heart. But the idea of actually, Jesus, I want a pure heart. I don't want anything left of the old. I don't want anything left that's tainted by selfish desires and lust and greed and the things of this world. I want a pure heart. And I got to tell you, it's convicting as I read this verse today, how many times in my life I've prayed that word, but actually in my heart, in my actions, and the, and the life that flows from that prayer, it's, it's indicting to me that what I've really said is, Lord, I just want a little bit better heart, but purity, mm, 
There's too much I'd have to change, too much I'd have to give up. And I hope that isn't the case for you. But if it is, I hold it before you today, even as I hold it before myself, to wonder and to ask, Lord, what would it look like? What would it feel like? What would it mean? What would I need to change to truly let you do your work in my heart, that my heart could truly be pure? I invite you to, to surrender and let go of anything that might be holding you back from that prayer because the result of a free and renewed and restored heart is greater than any treasure or any pleasure this world can give. And I know that that's something that I desire and pray for myself too. The last verse I'd like to focus on, or a couple verses, is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. You know, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You hear that, you know, the gift of prayer and the wonder that as we carry to the Lord Jesus our sin and our confession, our fears and our worries and the anxiety, the needs that we have and that we're worried about, all of these things, as we heed that invitation to carry it all to Jesus, we're given a promise that as we do this, God's peace, his spirit, which transcends all understanding, will guard our heart, and not to borrow from tomorrow's devotion, but it will also guard our mind. So prayer is the key to this. It's the most important preparation we can make to celebrate our Lord Jesus. Well, God bless you as you begin your season of Advent and your preparations to celebrate the coming and birth of our Savior Jesus. Amen.